It's time to stop. It's time to look out for each other in the distance. Time to stare humanity in the eyes. To take a break for the world. It's time to stop. Time to make a pause so we can play again. To think of everyone and meet no one. To reset, recenter, switch off, to move on. Time to change our little world. To calibrate the path of mankind. It's time to stop. We are meant to connect and we are stronger together. But separated, we are today more united than ever. And for now, our main strength is to be apart. It's time to stop. Nature, landscapes, beaches and monuments aren't going anywhere. They will still be there waiting for a better time to be lived. And we must do the same for a while. It's time to stop. The perfect time not to visit anything. Sometimes to rise is to stand still. It's time to stop. Stop and think of ourselves. Think of everyone else too. It's time to stop and refocus as a whole for all. It's time to understand and respect our times. Respect one another. The faster we stop, the sooner we will bond again. It's time to dream of those amazing days to come. For when those days arrive, we will say again. Aloha and good afternoon or good evening from Hawaii. My name is Jürgen Steinmetz for Livestream.Travel and eTurbo News. Uh, we're, today, uh, we're celebrating something very special. It's all part of our launch for World Tourism Network. And um, this is a very exciting week for us. We're launching a new organization uh, you're all now part of. And um, to find out more, if, you have, if you're not yet a member for World Tourism Network, just go to WTN.Travel wtn.travel. If you click on uh, launch events or the banner for launch, you find this event and many more. Tomorrow morning, actually, uh, we have two more events coming up today uh, or tomorrow, depending where you are. And tomorrow on December 9th, we have our official launch event. You shouldn't miss. And December 10th, uh, we have our keynote panel um, with the, um, and our, a uh, special guest is for Excellency Maya, the Minister for Tourism for uh, Bahrain, and she's running to be the next Secretary General for the United Nations for Tourism Organization. So we're excited um, for, for these two events as well. And um, I now, without further ado, I wanted to first, I see many of you are joining us from parts of the world where it's really the middle of the night. And this really shows commitment to our industry. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely impressed for the many of you um, on, on this platform now. We'll be live streaming this on all our eTurbo News website, on WTN, live stream on social media, and you will be able to find uh, repeats of this event till the end of the month. And it's also going to be ar archived on World Tourism events, and it's archived, of course, on the WTN channel. Before we officially start, I also wanted to recognize um, um, uh, my partner in World Tourism Network, um, Peter, uh, Dr. Peter Talo, who's joining us uh, from Texas. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Peter, for being part of it. And um, thank you. Peter, uh, Peter and I, we started this organization out of the rebuilding.travel discussion. And we're all excited that we're now getting um, this into a good structure. Uh, without uh, further delay, um, I'd like to um, give everyone a very special welcome to our guest of honor and uh, the host of this um, of this event is Louis Damore. Louis Damore is a good friend and he's been he's the founder of the International Institute for Peace to Tourism. 
I'm sure all of you know the International Institute for Peace of Tourism. And if you think about peace and tourism, you, you will think about Louis. There, this is the man of peace. And Louis, you're so much needed in these worlds. And what you've done with this organization um, really is absolutely amazing. That's why we actually gave Louis our first um, uh, award, hero award. And um, so we're glad you're one of our heroes um, together actually also with Diana who is here and uh, she is the IIPT um, president for the Caribbean and has our own community tourism. And um, so many of us, I don't wanna just go and, and recognize everyone but it looks like we're among friends here. And I wanted to uh, turn it over to the moderator um, who will take charge of this event. This is Fabio Carboni. Um, he is joining us from Italy. And I think you're titled your president for IIPT Italy. Is that correct? Welcome. You have to unmute yourself, Fabio. Yeah, yeah. I'm ambassador at large of the hello, good evening, or good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm ambassador at large of uh, the International Institute for Peace to Tourism and uh, founder of the um, chapter in Iran. Perfect. Welcome. And yeah, we give it over to you. Um, you're the host and um, uh, it's it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much, Jürgen. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, I would like to, to thank you for the uh, for this uh, welcome and uh, to give us the, the, the space. Uh, immediately welcome the, the, the proposal of the panel. And, uh, and of course, at this point, I would like to thank uh, all the, um, the the panelists uh, that that are here today for this uh, important gathering. Because let me tell you that um, the, the idea here was exactly what what you said, uh, which is uh, have a gathering among colleagues and among friends. Because uh, uh, I'm actually one of the the last person that joined the IPT officially. Uh, but uh, I can tell you that today is going to be a, an amazing day of discussion among people that are there, of course, Lou Damore, but uh, people that are, are there from the very beginning. So they will have a lot to tell about the past, the present and the future. So we're commemorating this 35 years of peace to tourism. The, the title is The Way Ahead. So the, the main idea is exactly this colleagues and friends gathering together, talking about what we did in the, so far and uh, what we are going to do uh, in the future. So I also don't want to take too much uh, time. I'm going to talk about my own experience in the end, but before, of course, I would uh, leave the stage to Luis Amore, this small uh, uh, presentation of, uh, he's the founder and president of the International Institute for Peace to Tourism. Uh, as you were saying, he's been instrumental in promoting the travel and tourism industry uh, as the world's first global peace industry. Uh, he found the IPT, I, IPT in 1986. Uh, but even after this 1992, following the UN Conference on Environment and Development, the, the, what we know as a Rio summit, he developed the uh, world's first code of ethics and guidelines for sustainable tourism uh, for the Canadian tourism industry. So a person that really is uh, a, a pillar, not only for us that we are in the middle of the debate on tourism and peace, but really a pillar for a, a form of tourism that is what we should aim at. Uh, Lou did, told us something that is uh, uh, for me and for many of us, for all of us, was uh, was uh, like a lighthouse uh, to follow. That is this uh, this idea: the higher a, a higher um, uh, purpose of tourism. So I think that he opened a new horizon to 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 many of us. So I don't want to take more time. I want to leave the, the, the floor to him and, uh, and thank him for, uh, for really for, for everything. Lou is- oh, Fabio, and hello everyone. See, I see so many good friends there. It's good to see you all. Uh, 
Thank you, Fabio, for organizing this. Uh, I, I'd like to say that Fabio may be one of the most recent uh, uh, active members of IIPT, but it's not so recent, it's at least three years. And uh, Fabio has been very, very active speaking at different conferences about peace through tourism, setting up the Iran chapter, which has been very active and very enthused about the possibilities of peace through tourism. And uh, we, we're at a time in the Middle East now with the additional peace uh, treaties that have been signed that tourism can truly pay, play a key role in the Middle East and Iran should be part of that. Uh, Fabio has been doing all he can to make that come to, come to fruition. Um, I'd also like to uh, go and, and mention that uh, Fabio also uh, put in place the first online peace through tourism course this past year, which was very, very successful. And we hope uh, to have another program of uh, peace through tourism uh, in the year to come. Uh, Thomas, uh, I, I'd like to just say to Thomas, uh, we've known one another for about 20 years. Uh, I, I think I was Thomas's first advertising client in 2001. <laughs> we, we bought a hundred dollar ad for our conference in Assisi, Spirituality and Tourism. <laughs> and we certainly had a good return on investment from that hundred dollars. <laughs> We've been very good friends ever since then. Thank, thank you very much, Thomas. And thank you for hosting us. And Louis, may I just uh, real quick, for those that don't mean to know under Thomas, uh, Louis, all my old friends know me under Thomas because when I first moved to the United States in, the, in, in 1982, 84, I, I went by my middle name, what is Thomas? Um, because I had to spell my name every five minutes. I, for a few years ago, I started going back to, to my real name, Jürgen, because now people in the US are getting a little bit more sophisticated and can actually announce it. So I'm the same person and thank you, Lou. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, so I, I know you as Thomas. <laughs> and I'd Louis, like to... I call him Thomas also, and he's my okay. business partner. <laughs> Great. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Taleb Rafai, even though he's not with us. Uh, he uh, had planned to be with us, but uh, something must have happened. Uh, Taleb has been very, very supportive of IIPT as uh, chairman of our International Advisory Board, and certainly all during his eight years as Secretary General of the UN World Tourism Organization. Uh, I have great respect for Taleb, not only for what he's done for IIPT, but what he did for the tourism industry. Prior to Taleb, uh, WTTC and UNWTO saw one another as competitors. Taleb changed all that with, uh, with uh, uh, David, uh, the, the head of WTTC at the time, David Scalzo. And they also joined for forces uh, with uh, Pata, uh, Mario Hardy, and the three of them were known as the Three Musketeers. And they unified the leadership of the tourism industry like it never has been unified before. So I'd like to thank Taleb for, for all of that. Uh, we're currently facing some very, very difficult times. There's no question about it. Um, uh, yesterday, we commemorated the uh, 79th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. 2,400 military persons and civilians were killed at Pearl Harbor. At 9-11, we lost 2,977 persons. This past week in the United States, 15,000 persons passed due to the COVID-19 virus. That's over 2,100 persons a day. So it's truly a, a tragic situation. But in this context, we still have to be positive. The Chinese have a, a word for crisis, it's Wei Ji. It consists of two characters. 
The first one meaning danger and the second one opportunity. So even in these difficult times, there are some good things that have happened. CO2 levels are the lowest they've been in many years. Humanity's ecological footprint is less than it has been in a number of years. A number of Zoom conferences have been held. Thomas has organized many of them, looking at rethinking tourism once we're over with the pandemic. So these are all positive things. And I might mention that historically, IIPT exists because of a crisis that existed in 1985-86. In those years, terrorism peaked. Most of it was aimed at the travel and tourism industry. I think many of you will remember the Pan Am hijacking, the Achille Loro affair, and many other similar incidents. Well, I first started promoting the idea of a conference on peace through tourism at the first Travel Outlook Forum held in Canada. That was in the year 1982 in, in Toronto. I, I was asked to be the keynote speaker as I was the futurist to the tourism industry in Canada at the time. And I concluded the talk by suggesting that the tourism industry in Canada get behind the initiative of Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, who was in his final year, and he was traveling to each of the capitals of Europe and other countries, talking with leaders about promoting peace. And I thought it would be a perfect thing for the tourism industry to get behind. But the response I received was, we should focus on things we have control over. And, and so the idea was dismissed. I continued lobbying leaders of the industry in Canada for the next two, three years. And the response was, what's tourism got to do with peace? Peace, that's government's job. And, and that, that's the baseline with which we started. The crisis 1985-86 opened the door. Again, as the futurist of the tourism industry, my, my consulting firm had a project called TourScan, which did ongoing studies on the future of tourism. And the clients for this were each of the provinces of Canada, uh, the government of Canada, Air Canada via rail. Um, and in that context, we did an in-depth study of the impact that terrorism had on tourism, the global impact. And clearly it was quite significant with travel around the world declining. We did that study for our clients. I then wrote a summary of it for the Business Quarterly, which is the preeminent business journal in Canada. And the editor sent a copy of that particular issue to each of the 100 uh, tourism leaders that the, in, in Canada. And two months later, Tourism Industry Association of Canada had its annual conference. And there was unanimity in a motion that Canada host an international conference on peace through tourism. So that is the good that came out of international terrorism some 35 years ago. Similarly, a lot of good can come out of what's happening now by rethinking tourism and the main purpose of, purposes of tourism looking at over tourism and how the leaders of the industry might collaborate in shifting more tourism to countries that can use it for economic and social development. If you look at where tourism is 
mostly receive. It's, it's primarily in Europe. And Europe is also the region of the world that has um, um, exceeded its, its ecological footprint. So the more that goes on in Europe, the more it exceeds its ecological footprint. Uh, a number of cities of, of Europe, Venice, Barcelona, also have over-tourism. How can we strategize to get more of that tourism to developing countries? And as developing countries, Africa, South America, and others that have an excess ec ecological capacity. So they not only can support more tourism, but they can use more tourism socially and economically. What can we do to move the, the future of tourism post pandemic in that direction? Um, I, I'd also like to, um, well, at, at this point, if, if I can ask Markley to give his intervention, um, and, and then I would like to continue with, with what I, I would like to say, but it would follow historically with, with uh, what Markley will be saying. Markley? Okay. Okay. Uh, just to thank, thank you very much. Uh, Lou, I would just uh, quite briefly introduce Mark Lee. Uh, Wilson is a IPT uh, member of the IPT board of directors. He's um, a director of international marketing for New York State Tourism, and uh, in the IPT is a uh, board uh, is member of the board of directors. Uh, thank you very much. Also, this is another figure that uh, is a uh, has a lot of time. In, inside the organization and uh, and uh, and for sure can uh, share with us uh, great uh, memories about uh, this experience. Uh, thank you, Mark Lee. The floor is yours. Uh, please unmute yourself, Mark Lee. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank all right. You. Well, I'm really happy to be with all of you and uh, Following on what Lou just said, I'm gonna start talking about virus. All viruses are not bad. In fact, if we did not have them in our gut, none of us would be alive. I got infected by a virus in Vancouver when I attended a conference organized by IIPT where they presented the pros and cons and benefits of socially and environmentally responsible tourism. I was very touched and impressed with what I heard and I am still suffering from that good virus today. At the time, I was the director of marketing for the Caribbean Tourism Organization, which at that time was an association of 29 Caribbean islands, the ministers of tourism were working together to promote tourism to the region collectively. And uh, at the end of the conference, I told Lou that I would be in touch. And I was, because what I did was to invite him to the annual conference of the Caribbean in the Bahamas to present to the ministers and leaders of tourism of the Caribbean, the subject of socially and environmentally responsible tourism. That was the very first time. In addition to Lou introducing the subject, which did meet some resistance, I also invited Ratnan Lampna, Lap, Ramnan Lapnapala, who at that time was responsible for uh, PATA in the United States. And he presented also on the things that they were doing 
uh, in that region of the, of the state, of the, of, the, of the planet. In addition to that, I invited Stanley Selengut, who was in charge of Maho Bay, which without a doubt was the leading ecotourism property and project in the Caribbean. He was way ahead of his time. And by the time he was finished, combined with what they had heard from Lachman and Lou, there was much more interested and awareness of the values of tourism that not just generates revenue, but contributes towards the upliftment of culture and the environment. Going fast forward, I learned today that between 2002 and 2018, the Caribbean Tourism Organization has had 12 conferences on socially and environmentally responsible tourism. I also learned today that for many years, the Caribbean Tourism Organization has retained an employee whose title is Sustainable Tourism Specialist. So Lou, your virus has spread without a doubt in the Caribbean. My stint with the Caribbean Tourism Organization was uh, three years only. After that, I formed a consulting company which helped places develop plans to increase tourism. And who was my first client? CTO. They hired me to put together the details for a successful first conference on ecotourism. I also joined IIPT in a project which we were assigned by the Canadian International Development Agency to identify projects that represent socially and responsible, socially and res sorry, socially responsible tourism in a number of Caribbean and Central American countries. We went to Trinidad, then we went to Barbados, and then we went to Jamaica. And in Jamaica, I introduced Lou to a lady who I love and honor and respect. The last name is Pike, McIntyre Pike. She is without a doubt uh, a beacon for the spreading of our good virus. After Jamaica, we went to Belize, then Guatemala, then Costa Rica, which is a leader in protecting and respecting nature. And that concluded the tour. But in addition to working on that project as a consultant, I was hired by many groups and companies to spread the virus. I was hired by the Oglagla Lakota Sioux Nation in South Dakota, which was known for its alcoholism, unemployment, and all sorts of uh, unpleasant problems, uh, which I know we all understand. The task was to work with them to divide some way in which they could generate tourism to help with their unemployment problem. It meant living with them. It meant getting to know them. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they benefited more than I did, but we did together end with a proposal on some action that could be taken to introduce tourism in a way that would help with the unemployment problem. In 1992, long time ago, Belize started to attract visitors. The year before that, their leader who was in power for a long time died. And after, when he was in power, he was against tourism. The new leaders decided they wanted to change things around. I was invited by 
the US government, upon the request of the Belize government, to go there as a consultant to figure out why the Belizeans were against tourism and why the, the government was having so many difficulties generating tourism to the country. It meant spending time with the people at all levels, conducting research, and that led to me presenting an ongoing program that will enable the Belizeans to benefit, get involved with, uh, and be leaders in tourism. I also, during that period, had a Belizean uh, female leader of a company shadowing me, and she was assigned to carry on after I left. And that certainly was significant in laying a foundation for the successful ecotourism business that Belize is benefiting from. I was also hired by New York University to spread the virus and spent six years teaching ecotourism at the university. And of course, as Lou said, I am a member of the board. Very quickly, I just want to mention my current job, which I have had for 21 years now. And it's, uh, it's amazing how things change. This time last year, I was running an office in London, an office in Germany, an office in Australia, and five offices in China, all for the purpose of increasing tourism to our city and our state. And I am privileged to be working for a brand that is probably the most popular tourism brand in the world and the state and city, which is without a doubt the number one tourist destination in the country. The way in which I have been able to spread the virus while in this job include changing the heart from, you know, the I heart NY from red to green and an entire program highlighting the fact that while there is skyscrapers in the city, there's a tremendous amount of green in the state. And that was accompanied by promoting ways in which people could enjoy nature in the state. I created a responsible tourism guide where the only places or activities that were allowed to be in the guide were those which could prove that they were doing something that was either helping people or helping the environment. And then we promoted uh, visitors to go to those places. I created bird watching programs. Uh, Sandy Hook destroyed 346,000 homes in New York State. Absolutely horrible flood. I was able to get a company that specializes in responsible tourism to bring visitors to the fancy Waldorf Astoria for a week and one, two or three days of, their week, of that week, they would pay to go and help clean out houses because there is a segment of the market that has a great desire to contribute and will pay for the privilege of contributing. I can continue with my work linked to promoting the outdoors, enjoying the outdoors. Uh, but in a nutshell, I am without a doubt the lead employee uh, in our office that is spreading the virus of tourism that respects people and respects the planet. So I thank you, Lou, for infecting me. And I thank you, colleagues, for sharing in this wonderful virus. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mark. I don't know if uh, this is uh, this you you are, you are talking about the virus that uh, yeah Lou is infecting all of us <laughs> with this. So don't know if Lou want to add. Uh, 
probably something to 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 this because you 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 told you want to add something in the end. Yeah, I, I just might mention uh, very briefly uh, the study that Mark Lee mentioned and that was uh, funded by CETA, the Canadian International Development Agency. That was probably the first uh, study on the potential of tourism in contributing to poverty reduction, in addition to the socially and environmentally uh, responsible dimensions that uh, Mar Mark Lee mentioned. And it took me uh, several months to lobby CETA to get that study. It was after the first global conference, which gave IIPT a lot of credibility, but still development agencies had no respect for the tourism industry to, be, to put it bluntly. The tourism industry was seen as a frivolous industry by all the development agencies at the time. Uh, the, it was known as the four S's, sun, sea, sand, and sex. That was the image of tourism at the time. Uh, this, following on that study and continuing efforts made by people like uh, Martley who received the virus, uh, IIPT started planning for its second global conference, which was in Montreal. And the theme of that conference was building a sustainable world through tourism. As we were two, three months away from the conference after having promoted it and uh, developing the program for it, I received a call from the World Bank, a vice president by the name of Dr. Demba Ba. And like I mentioned, tourism still at this time was seen as a frivolous industry. The World Bank had uh, funded some hotel projects but received a lot of criticism for it. And they got out of the tourism industry and none of the other development agencies would touch it. But Demba says the kind of tourism that you're promoting with your conference is the kind of tourism that the World Bank wants to get involved with. He came to the conference was one of our keynote speakers. We developed an excellent relationship with the World Bank for the several years that followed. I was invited to speak at several of their conferences. Uh, World Bank executives spoke at a number of our conferences, ex uh, uh, including conferences in Africa where it was particularly important. And um, that had a uh, led in turn to other development agencies beginning to consider the importance of tourism. The next one was DFID, Department of F Foreign Investment Development of, of, uh, of the United Kingdom. And they introduced a program, um, Tourism for Poverty Reduction in 1999. And since then other uh, organizations, as, as you know, have gotten into it. UNWTO included uh, in 2003 with their STEP programs, Sustainable Tourism to Eliminate Poverty. And that was uh, spearheaded by a good friend of Thomas's and mine, uh, Madam Do from, from Korea. Um, I, I think that uh, is uh, sufficient from me for now, if you wanna go on to the other speakers yeah Fabio. perfect Lou. thank you very much thank you very much so well uh, uh, now let me introduce and welcome uh, ajay uh, prakash is founding president of the india chapter of the ipt uh, ajay has almost 40 years of experience in the travel and tourism industry an amazingly uh, nice person which uh, once again, is uh, from the from the um, from the very beginning, from the very beginning in the uh, in the in, in the IPT, or he's following the, the IPT uh, for a very long time. So, uh, Ajay,
Yeah, Fabio, I lost you there for an instant, but I'm back. Sorry? Uh, I said I lost you for an instant because I have a match connection. I'm thinking a little bit outside my welcome back. So, um, yeah, carry on. So we, we can we can pass to the next to the next speaker, right? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I can hear you. Yes. Oh, okay. I think I think he has some 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 problem. Uh, if I think that if he's not going to to join us uh oh he's here ajay uh, there he is there he is okay we got him okay 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 <laughs> perfect <laughs> You want to create oh. some suspense. I say that you are very nice. <laughs> you're, you're a very nice person. So you want to confirm <laughs> that this. <laughs> thank you, okay. Fabio. Uh, thank you, Logan. And uh, you know, it's 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 lovely. It's lovely to have uh, this uh, group of people who believe in something uh, who started 35 years ago. I can tell you that you know my meeting with Lou was uh, was uh, it was a while in coming, but uh, I do believe it uh, changed uh, my life in some ways. Uh, in 2015, we founded the India chapter. Uh, Jurgen, I don't know, but. I think that he's having. I think we lost him. Uh, serious he... problems. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but with the con the, ne the connection is not is not good. No, even he's, if back. It... he's here. He's back. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I can see. Yeah, you. you know what what happens is, yeah. so um, in in these five years, I mean, what we've uh, done, I think, thanks to the groundwork that Lou had laid, we managed to actually you see the whole purpose of IIPD to my mind, and I think uh, Lou agrees, is to raise awareness about the power of tourism as a tool for peace. Of tourism as, a, as, as an equalizer you know, to promote uh, greater gender equality, to uh, look at you know, better living conditions, to heal wounds of conflict. And there are no better forum for for, for getting this kind of uh, information or belief out than either the ITB or the World Travel Market. And both of those uh, 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 organizations have been tremendously supportive as well of IIPT. So some of you might know that, you know, uh, we did three editions of the uh, Celebrating Her Awards which uh, looked at women in the world of tourism or hospitality or travel who've gone beyond business as usual. And uh, at the WTM, we did the ambassadors of this program where we, uh, of course, recognized Dr. Talib Rafai as, uh, as a global man of peace. And along with that, the two other people that Lou mentioned, uh, Mario Hardy and um, uh, the WTTC uh, chairman at that time. So, We've also, we actually got all the diplomats in Delhi together once. And we did something which we called Pats for Peace. It was, it was maybe a hundred di uh, diplomats representing about 78 countries for the same platform. And what we've been trying to do is something that you know we all owe uh, to Lou. Is talk about how tourism could be, especially in a time like this. I mean, everybody's bubbles. 
therefore becomes that we reinvent the way tourism is perceived. The higher paradigm of uh, tourism that Lou talks about is something that needs to be Jürgen, unfortunately, I, I, I think the best things go ahead with Diana. Right. Yeah. Huh? I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, anyway, uh, it's alive and can happen. Let me just, uh, Diana, a uh, few seconds to, to introduce you. Diana uh, McIntyre Pike uh, is in internationally recognized as the pioneer of community tourism, uh, which is already extremely important, uh, but is a president and founder of Country Style Community Tourism Network, Villages as Business, and uh, uh, finally president of the International Institute for Peace to Tourism, uh, chap uh, Caribbean chapter. And uh, Diana has a presentation for us. Thank you very much, Diana, jo for joining us. And um, well, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. I just wanted to say how excited I was that this forum has been created because Ludo Moore is one of our mentors of tourism in the way it should be done. And we started community tourism and named it over 45 years ago. Um, and when he met me, uh, we were, and thank you, Markley, for introducing me to Lou, because Markley knew me from the Caribbean Hotel Association days when I was a small hotels chairman. And I'll never forget when I went to Markley and said, um, how do I do something with the small hotels committee? Because it was only three persons there. And he looked at me and he gave me the greatest compliment, which I've never forgotten. And it's going to be in my book that I'm writing. Martin looked at me and says, what you need to do is, is to identify a Diana in every island. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Thank you, Markley, because that really motivated us and we had a successful thing going. Um, I was invited, my journey started with Lou um, in 1994 uh, for the Montreal conference when he invited me to do a presentation on community tourism and the future of community tourism with my small hotel that I operated, the Astro Country Inn in Jamaica, in the mountains. And, you know, he was so impressed with what we said that he decided to create the first chapter outside of North America with us, the Caribbean chapter. And that was 26 years ago. Thank you, Lou. Um, and I've been the president. And then he decided to set up the IPG International Community Tourism Network and asked me to be the coordinator. So what we have done with that is that we have net set up a network, because I'm a networker, uh, with our organization, the Country Style Community Tourism Network. And this organization um, has created the Villages as Businesses program as a support for the success. And it has embraced the IPT Peace Communities, Peace Villages program. And it has been a huge success because we are, we've done uh, training all over the Caribbean. But what we're doing is helping people to recognize the cultural heritage and you know, recognize that they have assets that are their lifestyle and organize themselves and participate in the market network. And we have done that very successfully uh, with people who thought they had nothing in their community. And, you know, it covers the heritage, the environment, the culture, the craft, and oh, it's so exciting to see the mindset change of people that we, and we don't need to create attractions because and we don't need to have costly infrastructure because we have already there. We just need to make people aware. And it, uh, this, this one is in Trinidad um, when I was asked to do a development of villages as businesses program there. And it was a huge success in Lupino 
and they now call it country style Lupino, which I was very happy. And they're all members of the IPT International Community Tourism Network along with us. And then we show them how their schools and churches uh, can be a part of the product. Uh, we have TUI, which is the largest storefront in the world that we're so excited to bring their visitors, their guests to enjoy a community in Jamaica, in the resort areas, um, to go to the school, go to the hairdressing salon. And the, these are pictures in between Trinidad and Jamaica. And, um, you know, the music and the dancing, all of it is not set up for visitors. It's what they do and they incorporate it. And then we have the food um, and cuisine. Oh my gosh, that is, a good, <laughs> I have people wanting to do a cuisine tour where they have the appetizer in one village and the main course in another village and then the dessert in another village. And we, on the right here, we have the bami making where the guests get involved with making the bami, which is made from cassava. Uh, and I felt good that that particular lady who does it was invited down to Dominica to set up the bami business there, which is great. Um, then we have the heritage, you know, Marcus Garvey Fair, all of this goes on. And then um, we have the honey making business. Uh, we've got Sandals Foundation on, involved, where their guests decided to uh, 600 guests who came into a community and what they did was they built the beehives for the beekeeping business that you see here and they also set up um, the basic school roof and th those 600 guests are now friends of that village ongoing and so that a relationship has been established and then during the training we did in Trinidad they set up a chocolate business during the five days of training I was amazed and they also did a water business. These are just examples of the hairdressing salon and so on. This is what visitors go for. They love that. They love to see what the people are doing and then what support they can give. So basically, uh, the benefits are there. Direct business support, return business. The visitors become market ambassadors. And we have now the Jamaican and the Caribbean diaspora saying they want to now develop the program further for villagers business for the Caribbean. We're right now setting up an MOU, but I want you to know that whatever we're doing, the IIPT is a part of. Uh, we, we don't, we're not leaving out the IPT because the IPT, uh, Mark, they call it a virus. Well, I, I'm overwhelmed with the virus. Uh, that's for sure. I, I just love what the IPT is about. And uh, we're trying to set up a community tourism trust fund. And now in each village, we have a steering committee that we set up. This picture is in St. Eustatius when we train them there. And they are so excited because they can plan their way forward without having to depend on the government, to depend on themselves once they've identified their assets. And then this is our presentation in, um, in, in Trinidad. And then we have a project where they have to write about their community and themselves. Um, and this is them making a presentation about their community. They found out things about their community they didn't know and about their family. Uh, and then we have an academy for community tourism and we have advanced BTEC certified training in association with the University of the West Indies, open campus. We now have an entrepreneurship training, which is certified. And we are going to be doing uh, community tourism study tours for uh, 21 from January. And you'll hear more about that. Um, and the, we give them marketing support with the brochures for the communities as they get themselves organized and they can do their marketing. And then we have now the formation of the Manchester Peace Coalition in 2030. Now, Lou is very excited about that because he, he, we had a conference for the IPT Caribbean in Mandible, which is in the mountains, 2,000 feet, 600 meters above sea level. And we invited Lute, of course, to be our guest speaker. And then he was introduced to Dr. Clifton Reed, who is, was in charge of the book spark. And everything emerged after that. They were so impressed with what Lou had to say that they, we set up the first IIPT uh, Peace Park in the Caribbean called in Brooks Park. And it was paid for by the local government there because they were really like what was being done. And 
we now have the mandible, which is the tongue, as the first P stone in the Caribbean. And we, we have done together, we have set up many other peace villages throughout the Caribbean. I won't go into all that, but this is Lou. Lou worked for, you know, Lou came and planted trees with me for peace when we had the official launch of the peace park. And this is Lou um, with us. That's our main committee for the peace coalition. Um, and the peace coalition was official launch in uh, 2016 at a peace breakfast ceremony. And our vision is that we want to be a place of peaceful and holistic living and to reduce domestic violence, promote better parenting, reduce school dropouts, support unified, um, uniform youth groups in Manchester and income generation projects in the target communities. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, we have the Jamaican diaspora on board. One is making connections work and they have put together this mission for us transforming local communities, inclusive, peaceful, caring, and enterprise enabled. I'm not gonna read all of this, but you can read it. <coughs> it's a collaborative leadership and management delivery system. And it is really condensing everything that we're about. And this is at the Peace Park. You see, they have the symbol of the IPG there. We're the only one that's done it in the Caribbean. We are in Barbados. We've set up the Barbados Community Tourism Network again in association with IPG Caribbean. I see that we have um, here Ma Master Brandon, who is one of our main partners. She represents us with her organization. And I, I hope she'll get a chance to say something because she's fantastic. And then Lupino, Country Style, and um, Jamaica has been branded the home of community tourism by Lou, the IPT. And we have endorsed that community tourism is community development through tourism. And we're trying to encourage our government to go that route. We're not developing communities for tourism. We're developing communities for themselves to do businesses, export business and so on. But visitors like coming to those communities. So that's how tourism can give support. And we're setting up community tourism centers in Jamaica and the Caribbean. This is the first one we set up. And we have about two more we're setting up right now. And those centers provide internet for the communities and visitors, uh, craft, uh, whatever it is that we can showcase. And, you know, it, it's exciting to see that people are enjoying the fact that they have a center that they can go to and be able to relate to and to market their products. So the highlights really is, a, you know, like a museum and local craft, we're setting up one in Mandeville now at the food gallery. And uh, the University of West Indies has endorsed this. Uh, and then we have the program that has been endorsed. If you see, we have a logo now with IPT that Lou helped us to so organize. Um, the IPT Community Tourism logo is there. And we have different groups, but we want to have a one voice approach for community development through tourism. And we have had many awards and I'm not going to read all of them, but the, I think the one that really was fantastic for us is the overall personal contribution, the Sponsor Tourism Award in 2008, and then the Resilient Award that IPT gave us, and the International Tourism Heroes Award, we'd like to thank those who decided to select me as one of them. And we have a team, a consultant team, and you'll see we have a good team here, and Dr. Bastia Brandon is there, and a number of others are getting involved with the consulting team. So I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity to let you know that the Villages as Businesses program is sustaining and enhancing Caribbean communities through entrepreneurship in partnership with the IPT Caribbean. That is our project and it is working and we have people outside of the Caribbean wanting to embrace us. I'd like to highlight a very special person here, uh, Risa Sultani who has been a tall strength. He is IPT's uh, person when it comes to the IT business and so on. And thank you, Risa, for your support. He set up a, uh, a very nice um, website for us, which is visitcommunities.com. It's not on this one because this was a past presentation I'd done. But what I want you to know is that we got funding, Lou, from CEDA for one year 
for community tourism because they were so impressed with all that we had done. And we also got funding from the World Bank. So I think your virus, as Markley described it, has really created a great sensation. And with your endorsement, it has made us even more accepted internationally. Thank you. Um, I think I have finished now. Uh, yes, can you? Sorry? Yeah, I'm going to move it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <clears throat> Thank you, Diana. Yeah. And um, I, uh, Fabio, you 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 have the lead still. Yes. Uh, the next uh, next panelist will be um, will be um, Diana. Uh, no, uh, Gail uh, Personage, uh, president of the IIPT uh, Australia. We're going from Jamaica to Australia. This is now a global movement, isn't it? <laughs> okay, thank you, Diana. Oh, yeah. So, Gail? Thank, thank you, Fabio, and uh, greetings to everybody uh, from sunny Sydney. It is uh, 24 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit for those that still work in that uh, heat transaction. And uh, apart from the normal uh, technology glitches, we are up and running. So, there you are. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, trying to keep it um, succinct, um, Australian chapter, it was conceived by uh, Daphne and Lou in Amman in the year 2000 uh, at the Amman Summit. And uh, there were a couple of Australians there, um, Daphne Lowe, Faye Alexander, and I can that, and Daphne is on online with us now, and also Andreas, who I could see his name up. Um, a lovely Greek gentleman, but uh, second home is Australia, and another gentleman called Ian Kelly uh, from Adelaide. Um, when they came back to Australia, it was um, Andreas and Daphne that again launched and formalized a chapter in Australia. Now we celebrate our 20th anniversary next year. So we're 19 years young at the moment. So how do we take the concept of peace through tourism and the, the ethics of it and translate it into some sort of materialistic um, evidence that, that industry and people could grasp? So we have tended to go um, to do hopefully some practical things. So we started off to launch three over the first several years, three national conferences in Australia. And we brought together both the academic and the travel industry people from all the different facets for discussion and case studies on peace through tourism. So that was in the first formative years. It was at the same time that the, one of the newest nations to be born was East Timor or timor Leste, as it was known. And Australia, of course, had very close connections with that uh, new developing country. And it was a number of our members who worked with the people uh, at timor Leste or East Timor to, um, help, to help and promote and assist them in forming and developing a tourism uh, product. So that was our, again, we hosted two events in Sydney uh, to promote and get trying to help launch East Timor as um, a tourist destination. We then followed it, followed it on, not necessarily in chronological order, but we then followed it with our academic contacts with the University of Sydney. And um, the first undergraduate uh, program was formed at the University of Sydney uh, in consult with the 
Peace and Conflict Studies faculty. And they ran for nearly five years a summer school for the undergraduate program, specifically on peace through tourism. And Lou and Daphne and a number of the IIPT PT people helped them in formulating the, um, the material to form that undergraduate program. Next came along, we were a bit slow in getting off the mark to, again, how do we show, what is the evidence, how we can materially show what is peace through tourism. And of course, one of the things that we talk about is peace parks. And uh, we've been fortunate, uh, Daphne and I and a number of us, to go to a lot of the international conferences. And of course, the legacy was often a peace park. So not to be undeterred, it took numbers of visits up and down the mountains. And it seemed to go on for two years because you're de dealing with government councils, local government, state governments. But we finally got our first peace park in Australia. And it was with the World Heritage Site at the Blue Mountains and a village called Lura. And uh, that was also officiated by the ambassador from Turkey at the time. And it also commemorated the, um, the Great War, of course, of World War I, which we were uh, using that as a vanguard. So that was our first peace park. Uh, took a couple of more years and we got our second peace park um, at the Sydney Harbour National Park at the heads, at, um, the heads of Sydney Harbour. So we're at both ends of Sydney as iconic identifications. And funnily enough, it's at a, a place called Kew Station, which is very apt because it was the original quarantine station uh, for Australia during the early part of the 1800s when people would come to Australia from far and near, they would go into quarantine. It really came into its own after the First World War and uh, where the soldiers would return. And of course, that was the peace, um, uh, sorry, the Spanish flu in, um, influenza, which was housed there at, at uh, Kew Station. 100 years on, of course, now it is a major accommodation and tourism event center. And that's where our Peace Park is located within that facility. And our third project, <clears throat> so we caught up now with uh, 2020, and our third Peace Park, um, which I also had been working on for a couple of years, was in the capital city of Tasmania, the island state of Australia, uh, which is Hobart, which is its capital. And that is a new development being done on a old industrial waste area. And it's a new specifically built tourism precinct where the future cruise ships will come in and um, a park recreational and tourist iconic landscape. And we were able to get a peace promenade to be established within the design. It is still in stage one. So we got that up and running. And also at the same time, we were able to get Hobart identified and to be accepted as the first city of peace in Australia. So I went down on the 16th of March, 2020, for the event on the 17th, but of course COVID overwhelmed us. So everything was canceled. Um, I stayed in Hobart for a couple of days. I was still able to see the mayor. We, uh, <clears throat> there was two of us with a photographer. We had a photo op, officially gave them the mayor the plaque. But I think it's the world's best kept secret because all, um, all advertising promotion was came to a screaming halt because also the government, state government, didn't want to be seen to be promoting um, tourism activity because I caught the last flight out of Tasmania before they closed the borders and it became an island state with um, no entry or exit. 
So um, we hope to relaunch that again at the appropriate time next year. So we have three peace parks and a one peace city in Australia. We also, as a tangible evidence, we launched a, a, a year, a pilot program, this time with the University of Technology in Sydney. They're the only university in New South Wales that actually run um, any form now of a tourism degree. They've all been wound down, but they, they have a specific uh, part of their uh, business uh, degree in marketing. They have a tourism subject. So we were able to launch a student, an IIPT student peace essay award. It was a pilot program last year. It went very, very well. And the, the um, powers that be within the university liked it so much. <clears throat> they wanted to continue the relationship. And they then incorporated the 2020, and it was the first time that the concept of an essay on peace through tourism, sustainability, and other areas was incorporated into the actual curriculum and it was an assessment item. So it is in, embedded now into the curriculum um, for uh, the business degree in tourism. So we're, um, we're looking for ongoing relationships there. Um, <clears throat> one of our other achievements, we were able to work with Lou, of course, and John King, and we sent a delegation to Jordan um, at the height of the Syrian refugee crisis. And um, our delegates there uh, went to the Asquith um, refugee camp and we met with families. We went to a school. We took um, food, uh, clothing items and uh, school items, both for fun and for uh, learning purposes. And uh, we spent um, seven to 10 days in Jordan and um, we wanted to let them know that um, they weren't forgotten, that the people of the world outside their little camp of 47,000 people that we, we visited, of, of which 75% were children, that they are not, they weren't forgotten and aren't forgotten. And we extended a genuine hand of um, peace and friendship with some practical, um, additives to it. Um, moving on from there, so what is IPT Australia chapter? Um, we have a couple of coalition partners, of course, and I see that Bridget is um, part of one of the first coalition partners. We had the um, World Expeditions, a major tour operator for all Australia, and Flight Centres Travel Group, which is the was the largest uh, travel agency group, travel agents uh, in the world. And unfortunately, they have been brought to their knees during the last, uh, this year. But um, their foundation, um, uh, General Manager Sandra is also on the Zoom with us today as well. So we acknowledge them um, uh, for, their, for their resilience in staying with us. Uh, we've also been actively involved in Indigenous tourism, attending the Australian Indigenous Tourism Conferences. And we were also implemental in working with a gentleman who's near and dear to Lou and all of us, a gentleman called Ben Sherman. And um, we worked with him and he came to Australia and the formation of the World Indigenous Tourism Alliance was formed. Um, <clears throat> and that was done at a conference in Darwin, and it was under, uh, out of that conference was called the Larakai Declaration. Larakai is the indigenous um, group, in, indigenous tribal group in Darwin. So it's the Larakai um, Declaration, but we were certainly present and I was able to give a presentation to the group there to talk about the power of the collective internationalism of everybody coming together. <clears throat> We've also spoken at Eco Tourism, uh, the Australian uh, Pacific Asia Eco Tourism Conference, and presented 
both cases on Indigenous tourism and also on sustainable tourism, climate change and peace. And of course, I was able to introduce them to the Lasaka Declaration, which of course is an IOPT signature for us as well. So the future, of course, is the big question. Australia with this COVID has is a bit of a gold star, um, which we take great pride, but of course it's at the expense of the devastation to the rest of the, rest of the world. Um, Australia has only lost, might I say, but that's used uh, respectfully, 948 souls from the whole of Australia due to COVID. And um, we are an island continent, which has helped. We have closed off the borders. We are letting people come in slowly. They go into quarantine. It is very compliant <clears throat> and we have successfully halted or slowed down the spread of the virus, but at a great cost. Although technically, at the end of last week, we were technically out of recession. So we were in recession for eight or 10 months. Now we're technically out of it. But of course the tourism industry will be the last to pick up. But the focus now within the tourism industry is domestic tourism. And it is absolutely going beyond everybody's expectations. Australians have been great travellers, 25 million in the population, and we have usually six or seven million that travel outside of Australia every year. Um, actually, it's higher than that. So we're great travellers. So all those people are wanting to spend their tourism dollar and it's being regenerated throughout Australia. So we'll be working very hard to um, work with our domestic partners and uh, to spread the word for some more practical applications. Still working on peace parks in Queensland and still working for them in Melbourne. But our big year will be next year with our milestone 20th anniversary. We're already starting to work the project. And of course, an invitation will go out to all of you to come to Australia with the perfect weather. Thanks, Fabio. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gail. Thank you very much. Um, I, I don't know if you know this, but when you invited me to, <laughs> to, to, to an event, okay, I had to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, this time only for you in reality. <laughs> I I've said, got the best time because, slot. We've got the best time uh, because, slot. Yeah, I, know, I know the best for you, but it's 4 o'clock in the morning a.m. here. Know. So I know. We've got the, the best time zone and the best weather. What can I say? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah just, just, just a joke. It's always, a, it's always very good to, to, to see you, and I have a, a great memory of uh, the, the event together with the, with the university. Actually, I'm going to show exactly a picture about this uh, later on during my, during my intervention. Uh, but now I would like to leave the stage to, to Reza. Reza is, a, uh, is a, another very, very important figure uh, for the for the IPT, uh, Reza Soltani uh, is a marketing psychologist from uh, from Belgium, specialized in uh, branding and marketing. Um, he's the founder of a peace festival, bringing people together through music and uh, and dance. Co-founder of uh, Chernobyl Peace Tours, and uh, he followed the, the IPT, supporting. Uh, supporting us uh, exactly with the, uh, let's say, digital marketing, communication, and uh, everything that is online basically is in uh, his hands and uh, good hands because we, uh, he really, uh, in, we work together, we talk almost uh, every day. Uh, so I can personally say that he make a change uh, in the online in the page immediately like he's always working uh, a few days ago he's now in uh, in laos a few days ago we were talking and at a certain point i understood that was uh, was very late there and i said Reza, but what time is there it's so four o'clock in the morning <laughs> why are we working go to sleep <laughs> so really 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 a, a, a great man we we travel together 
uh, in, in Iran. We, we work together in Iran, so I'm very happy to, to introduce him. So Reza, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for, uh, for everything. You have to unmute yourself, please. Good evening, good morning. Uh, thank you, Fabio, for the introductions. Thank you, IIPT team, and especially my dear friend, Lou. Uh, it is an honor to work with IIPT and with all of you. As uh, Fabio said, I've been involved in the marketing and the branding of IIPT. So I'm not going to talk about much about the past or the ideology and the things that IPT has done. There are the heavyweight people here who has uh, talked about it, and Diana, Lou itself, uh, um, Gail, and uh, all of you. So I'm not going to talk about that. I think um, uh, the best is that I talk about the marketing and the branding of IPT and the new technologies. First of all, what, uh, when I came to the IIPT a few years back, I think three, four years back, um, I started to creating a new website, which was really needed. And uh, as you know, now everything is about online. So uh, we have a new website, uh, now it's a few years, and uh, soon we're going to update it again. I think that's very important part. The other things that I have really focused on was the keyword of the peace through tourism. And before I came in, the, the focus was on the, the word IIPT. So it was not the focus on, of the keyword, and that's very important. And if you go now to the Google, which is the most important things, and you search peace through tourism, that's IIPT, it's coming up the first. It was not like this. But we all know the peace through tourism have been founded and pioneered by Lou and the IIPT. And that was very important to, to make sure that everybody knows that and stays there forever. So uh, I have uh, done for the online marketing, mailing list, newsletters. We have regularly uh, lots of newsletters we're sending out. And um, that's, that's the thing. The other things that I've been doing, unfortunately, now with the COVID have a bit stopped, is uh, organizing the peace tours. I have, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, uh, Raza, let me make you a co-host and then you can do that. Okay. Just, I'm trying to find you here. Oh. How come I don't find you? You don't exist. <laughs> oh, it works. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, that's a Chernobyl. So I've been working on, um, well, first, actually, I forgot. So I'm also a co-founder, as Fabio said, uh, and founder, actually, of the Peace Festivals. And uh, we had, uh, two months ago, a very big event for 24 hours. It was a music online, live music online from starting from Los Angeles and ending in uh, Papua New Guinea. And uh, there is a great speech of uh, Luda Amor there. I advise you to go and see it. And of course, uh, peace festivals and uh, IIPTR partners. Um, so uh, but we, what I've been uh, uh, working on is creating peace tours uh, in, in three places. Uh, the first is in Chernobyl, which has um, over a million people. And um, it has been now uh, recognized also by the government and ministry in, in Ukraine and is going to continue. That's very important because peace tours, and that's exactly the, it shows the importance and the value of the work that Diana is doing because he, she's bringing the people to the tourists to the local people and meeting each other is very important. When we talk about the peace and through tourism, everybody thinks when you talk about the peace, it should be about uh, not doing war, but that's uh, not only, that's a part of the issue. The conflict resolutions, the, the discrimination, the racism, the hate, all those things are part of the IIPT. 
and the important things that is doing and community tourism and things that Diana is doing is, is exactly those things, bringing people to the locals. So they, they, they meet each other, the stereotyping and all those issues uh, will be reduced and it's, it's, really, it's really helpful. So uh, going back to the, to the peace tours, we have been on three projects. Uh, the, one, the first one is the Chernobyl Peace Tours, which uh, we are now officially partners. And everybody, when the COVID hopefully soon finish, uh, uh, everybody going to the Chernobyl, which is over a million, and it was a very important uh, series in the Netflix, which uh, changed lots of things, and it added a few more millions to those visitors. They will receive also our uh, credo, as you see like this, the tourists. So it, they will become a meaningful tourist. They are not just going to, to see the sad things there. They're going to, to, to think and, and see the things. What happened? It's not like you just going there, take some selfie and, and pictures and go and put it on the Instagram. It's going to make you think. And that's very important. That's very important that the people understand the hate, the war and the importance of the peace. Uh, the second, uh, well, I will show you some more uh, photos of the Chernobyl. So on, on these tanks is going to be also the, the logo of IIPT. Um, here, this is the kindergarten uh, where that disasters happens. All the children uh, in their sleeps uh, have uh, died, unfortunately. Um, he is one of the first who entered the Chernobyl uh, zones and uh, um, Sergei Mirel, and uh, he has been working for long, many, many years and writing many books. And he's going to, to be our tour guide there. So people going uh, to the Chernobyl, they're going to, to experience uh, the peace through tourism, the, the real meaning, the peace through tourism when, or, or being a, a peace tourist This is the, the command that it had been uh, destroyed here. So they could uh, launch the bomb, actually. That's the, the, the things and... Uh, Reza, we don't see anything else. We only see the first picture never again. Oh. Just for your information. Can you see that? We see the same picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, it prison uh, on the never again uh, slide. So what can be the, can you It's on your computer. Now? You might want, just want to change. I think you may have the wrong window on your computer you're, you're sharing. You may have this presentation on another window and then just click on it on your computer. That should do it. Okay, let me, but I am seeing it by myself. Yeah, you do, but what you share is only the window what shows never again. Okay. You may have to change the window you want to share. So if yes, you again well, on the share screen on the bottom, you see all the windows open on your computer and just share the one you wanted to share with the person. Ah, okay. Okay. There we go, okay. Okay. So that's the tank, the, the IIPT logo will be here as well. Um, that's the, um, can you see that? That's the kindergarten when, where the, the children has all died when the disasters happen? Yes, we see it. Okay, that's great. That's the nuclear bomb launch uh, command room, actually, that it was destroyed. So here the people could uh, push the button and launch a nuclear bomb, probably. So uh, the, uh, I don't know if you have seen the credo. Uh, hold on. Yeah, this one. Uh, 
I don't know. Okay. So everybody is going to enter the Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl military actually is a is a military zone, is a closed zone. They're going to to see the um, the credo of the IIPT here. That's very important, and it's going to make the people think, not just going there to take photos and leave. So um, that's uh, that's going to be handed to all the tourists entering there. The other things that I've been working on it is the Hiroshima. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry for the. So you're organizing tours there as well. Well, yes, we are. Well, it. You know, there is. There is for the like for Chernobyl. I've been working on it almost for two years. So it's so much administrations, and because those places are not really just a usual. Uh, tourist places that the uh, you know or is in the private hands are not in the private hands they are uh, in the government hands and and you know then is so much bureaucracy and the administration that uh, have to be done i'm also in uh, in talk and which is almost conferred with the city of hiroshima and we're going to have we, there are now a small uh, peace tours there it's not really called not peace tours but there are some tours but soon there are going to be also peace tours, which uh, also will be with the credo of the IIPT, and that's very important. So we're going to have uh, in, uh, in Chernobyl, in Hiroshima, and the next one is in the South Korea demilitarized zone. That's going to be also hopefully from the next year, if it's uh, confirmed, which the chances are very good. So we will have a peace tours in three places, that uh, historically and or or the or or the at the present are in the conflict and that will make the people think twice before one going to the war or or any other hateful uh, thing. So I think I'm going to stop for now and uh, I don't know. Okay. That, that, that's great, Riza. When do you expect to start the uh, DMZ tours? Uh, that's going to be next year. The government, we are waiting for the approval from the government. I've been also actually organizing um, with the others a um, um, seminar and online conference in, uh, in the South Korea, which you are invited and you are going to be actually, uh, so I mean Lou Damor, um, as a representative of the IIPT and uh, if the corona finished, then it's going to be a big conference and it's not going to be online. But if it can, continues, then probably in March is going to be the online conference in the South Korea. And uh, then uh, you are invited and hopefully by that time we can launch the, the peace tours. And when the borders open and things get back to normal, then uh, there will be a peace tours there too. Have you and got the permission? Course, have you got the permission of North Korea as well? Uh, no, no. Okay. I leave that uh, to others. <laughs> I leave that to the Jorgen to go to North Korea, get a permission. <laughs> I, 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 and then, I didn't vote for Trump. It won't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. And then one more thing is very important also, as uh, Diana mentioned, so we are working very closely together and uh, we are... Uh, we, we want and hopefully we will soon to have also uh, community tours and community tourism internationally much on bigger level. Of course, she has been doing this for many, many years and uh, she's the master of that. So uh, that's very important. And we want to have also community tours in different places, which, which we know that how important it is for the peace building. That's great, Riza. Thank you very much, Riza. Thank you. Uh, so I, I can I can move to the next the next speaker. Uh, another uh, let me say lovely person because uh, we in uh, in the context of this uh, this panel of this event of today, uh, I had the opportunity of, to talk with her for uh, uh, more than one hour. Um, was supposed to be a briefing, but in the end, it was a very, very nice conversation. Uh, Birgit Troer, 
she holds a PhD in tourism management and has published in top uh, international academic journals and academic textbooks. Uh, she she has a long history in travel and tourism, both as a, a in the in the East industry as a practitioner and uh, and in uh, in academia. Um, prior to to the the, 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 the academic work. Uh, she has worked in international airline industry, retail and wholesale travel agency, in tourism resorts, uh, etc. Uh, as the founder of the Cultural Angle, she continues to educate and inspire her audience to view the world around us, uh, within us, uh, from different angles. Uh, to act with a thoughtful heart and a caring mind in our aspiration for peaceful travel and peaceful coexistence. What about the link with the IPT? Birgit is a charter member of the International Institute for Peace to Tourism for the Travel for Peace campaign, uh, a member of uh, ICTP, Rebuilding Travel Project, uh, Hope Travel, and a founding member of the World Tourism Network. So thank you very much, much Birgit, uh, to, be, to be with us. And uh, I leave you immediately the, the floor. Thank you. It's um, my pleasure to be here today with all of you, and I've been paying attention to all your various perspectives, and it's always delightful to hear people with such a passion to talk about the concept of peace through tourism. Um, as you just indicated, I'm a bit of an outsider in that sense that I'm not part of the IRPT family per se. Um, However, as you sort of indicated, I have a very strong passion for the whole concept of peace, um, right from the start, because I've worked in the industry, but also through my academic training and also through my teaching, which actually work quite strongly in the field of sustainable development and tourism ethics. Birgit, your voice is very faint. Thomas, can you uh, increase the volume? Uh, well, actually, Birgit would have to do it on her end. If you can maybe up the volume a little bit on your microphone. Can you hear me better? Yes. Okay, I think yeah. I'll have to move. Yes. <laughs> I think I have to move right into the screen. So put <laughs> up with me I'm doing this. Um, all right. As I said, I'm a bit of an outsider of the um, IRPT family, um, but the concept of peace per se has always been part of what I have done. Um, mainly also came through when I was teaching at universities in the area of tourism, with a focus on responsible tourism and sustainable development and the notion of ethics. So it is very close to my heart. And um, how did I come across IFPT? That is an interesting journey because I have just released my book finally, which is called The Way of the Peaceful Traveler, Dare to Care and Connect. Now, I have written that um, as a social psychologist, really, as a behavioral scientist in travel and tourism, in trying to promote um, peaceful behavior and respectful behavior amongst everyone. That is specifically uh, the travelers, um, always having uh, been considering the notions of impact, negative impact and positive impact of travel and tourism, which involves all the various stakeholders, including the tourists and the travelers. On one side, the demand side, on the other side, of course, the tourism side, which is a questionable there as to are they operating on the premise of peace. So we're talking about macro level and micro level. We're looking at politics within uh, between countries. I think a few people have uh, referred to that. And we're looking at peace within countries. Not to forget, and I think the creator points that out, peace starts within ourselves. And that's what I have focused on. And I believe um, that is very important um, now more than ever because we're suffering from the impact of coronavirus, economically, socially, psychologically, rise in stress levels, rise of disconnect, rise of depression, people not 
able to travel and connect with loved ones. But all of that now has a negative side to tourism or peace through tourism. So my uh, appearance on this scene now with IIPT is um, somewhat delayed because the book was supposed to come out four years ago and then I put things on hold for various reasons. Then I had the book ready to come out just as COVID broke out. And I was actually just on my way from Australia via Dubai, where I used to work and live, uh, working there at Zayed University. Um, and then I was stuck in Spain, a beautiful Barcelona, for three months on my way into Germany as an Australian citizen, no longer a German citizen. And um, so I had to experience the whole notion of what it means to be traveling in a non-peaceful world because the borders were shut. And I felt like um, a foreigner not being allowed back into my own home country. So all of that. So where, what can I do? I'm not going back to what I have done in the past. I'm really keen to see what we can do now. Um, where does peace through tourism come into the play of developing and rebuilding travel? Um, and know that IPT has had two major programs. One is the Global Peace Card program, and the other one is Travel for Peace campaign, which both of them were launched in 2016 at the uh, 30th anniversary in London, where I was present, and that's where I actually met Lou personally. Incidentally, I think I noticed Bia here on, online as well, who is also a charter member, I believe, of the campaign. If you're still there, Bia, um, hello. Um, so my focus is really to try and um, bring awareness or raise awareness of what peace is. And peace has to start within ourselves. Now, as a social psychologist, I thought, oh, how can I use my insights of travel and tourism to actually teach people or make them aware of capacities that we as human beings have which one of the major ones is to connect with people. How do we connect? We connect through communication and through emotion, and through understanding the cultural uh, complexities of who we are, where we live, and the cultural diversity that we all carry within ourselves and we all share. And the common value within all of that is peace. So, where do we go from now? With my uh, involvement in IRP, I don't know yet, but I believe that we can do more if we look at different angles, and that's my name of the company, is Cultural Angle, is the culture of care, the culture of peace, um, to promote an understanding amongst everybody involved in tourism. That includes the demand side, the travellers, but also the supply side, which by my um, experience, there is a lack of appreciation of the importance of the values associated with peace, which are linked to the notion of sustainability, or should I possibly say regeneration, because of adding something rather than uh, taking something away from destination. Um, I think that's where I come in, and that's what I would like to be involved in, to raising that awareness um, through workshops that I have been done, doing privately, mainly with people through word of mouth, because travel and tourism is a perfect tool as a context to teach people about emotional intelligence, about themselves, how they feel. Brigitte, 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 that, sorry if I interrupt you, but if you could increase the volume even more or raise even more, the, or, or raise the, the because you're saying extremely interesting things, but I you think people have uh, some problems in uh, hearing yeah. you. If you go to settings and click on audio, then you should see your microphone. You can easily bring it up a little bit. I'll just try and do this up just one second. Nah, come on. And now I've got the setting here, but it just doesn't uh, interact. Bear with me. How's that? Is that better? 
Is that better? Well, <laughs> it's probably as good as it gets. Better but if maximum. you give me, there should be a sliding bar you can just bring Brigitte, it up. Brigitte, Brigitte, it's up to 100. Brigitte, what computer are you using? Is it a Mac? I'm or very you... old, very old PC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's as good as it gets. So we were trying. <laughs> Okay, I keep it short. Um, as I just tried to point out, um, I have just released the book and it's called The Peaceful Traveler with the title, of course, very much reflects um, the Credo's title, um, The Peaceful Traveler. Um, and that's what we tried to promote through the Travel for Peace campaign, I believe, was the initial idea of that to try and get all the industry people involved in sharing the Credo and the value system that is inherent in the credo. My approach to um, talking about peace through tourism is by raising the value appreciation of peace because underpinning any culture or cultural approach, we're talking about the visual, the, the things you can see in tourism, which is the heritage buildings, all of that when we go and travel. But underneath that are the value systems so if we can elevate people's awareness and appreciation of the value that people have and share harmony and peace rather than hate, I think Reza just mentioned that word, stereotyping, prejudice, discrimination. Now, that to me is close to my heart to try and decrease that um, mindset which we are now, due to COVID, are actually watching and seeing rising. So I might just keep it at that because um, the volume is a problem. And then unless I crawl really into the computer, I don't think I can do any better. Um, so peace through tourism, for me, is raising awareness and consciousness of the value systems on which we operate as travelers and as people in the industry. That is the driving current that we should always remind ourselves of and everybody around. When we're looking at sustainability, people talk about economic <coughs> the bottom line, social impact, economic impact, environmental impact. How can we raise that consciousness? And uh, that's where I would like to be involved. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Birgit. Thank you, Birgit. Um, sorry, let me, I don't want to interrupt you, of course, but uh, I would like to announce the, <laughs> the arrival of uh, uh, Talibrify. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I apologize for being a bit late. It's too early here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I apologize really it, it, it's we are we are uh, we are uh, participating from all over the world so yeah someone someone had to suffer so, yeah. no problem <laughs> there's no suffering I'm from, yeah. I'm from Italy I'm from Italy I'm, I'm talking from Italy Brigitte is from okay. uh, from Germany so yeah yeah uh, yes, so we're in south of Spain I'm in Spain so we're in the same boat I know I know I know I know I know I know <laughs> When, uh, I enjoyed, when I enjoyed listening. Yeah. But thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. No problem, no problem at all. No problem. I'm enjoying so, listening. Okay. Um, I would suggest this. You were supposed to be the the, the, the first speaker. Uh, I would suggest to 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 to, to finish the, the panel and then leave it the, the, the floor. Um, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, perfect. Thank you very much, Birgit. Um, it was very interesting. I just have immediately one question for you because uh, if you can, uh, if you can answer uh, to this, they were asking about the book. All right. There were people here asking about the book. Right. Where they can find the book. Right. All you need to do is actually type in, or you go to Amazon, type in the way of the peaceful traveler, and it will pop up automatically. Yeah. 
Can you can you write it also in the here in the I type in it the in to the chat, hey? Yeah, in yes. the chat. Yeah. Yep. Yes, and I will do that. At the moment, the Kindle has only come out, but the paperback should come out within the next few days. I already have already posted on my website also activities that people can engage with to promote what I've been talking about. And Birgit, if you send us uh, this link, we'll be happy to add it to your profile on WTN.travel. And everyone right. can just go um, look under Germany. I think you're listed and uh, find you and we'll see your link so they can buy the book. Yes, it's, it's, I mean, as I said, it's just um, an automatic internationally global Amazon listing. It's, you can buy it anywhere and wherever you are, you would just be uh, directed to that. I do believe I have an international link that I could hopefully send you so that might make things easier. And I didn't even think of that today. Let me just see if I can type it in. But just hang on a second. It's too early in the morning now for me to see. Doing just very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, great, if, great, great. Yes. And even if you just type this into Google, the way of the peaceful traveler, just that, it comes <clears> up. <throat> You'll find another book that comes up called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, a way back that came out. And I'm glad to, glad to see it there because it has very similar notions that I'm dealing with. Um, but you will see further down, there's definitely the link straight away. And that takes you onto my website where you can order it. You click on that link, it takes you to my website. That website then has the link to take you straight into Amazon. So that's probably the easiest. Just type that into Google or uh, Amazon directly, and it takes you there automatically. And it's all there to, uh, downloadable. Okay, any questions, you, you can send me a message. I'd be delighted to find out more and talk to you all about it. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brigitte. Um, I'm going to to, 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 to close the, the, the panel for this um, um, intervention of the our friends and colleagues. Um, and I'm going to to, to briefly introduce myself. And, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, I mean, recently uh, joined the, the IPT in 2018 officially, and uh, so two years ago, almost three years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm going to share also uh, uh, something that I. Uh, <clears throat> so yes, uh, it was an, 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 an honor for me, an honor to me uh, to to uh, to join it, uh, even if it was it was not on 2018 that I discovered the the, the, the existence, uh, but I was following the the the, the organization, the, the institute uh, already uh, many many years before. Um, as, as an academic, I was studying, and um, the, the the starting point uh, was was uh, the the debate around intercultural uh, dialogue and uh, the role of uh, tourism to promote intercultural dialogue. This is how I arrived uh, to the to the to the IPT uh, because some reflection. Uh, that were related to what we study in the university in relation with tourism and intercultural dialogue, tourism uh, and, and, the, and sustainability, and what we have then in the reality. And uh, what we have in the reality, unfortunately, is not something that reflects what we study in the books or what we talk about when we do our, our papers. We have a kind of uh, uh, tourism that is still um, irresponsible, unsustainable. Uh, so what happened is that remain in, in my mind as, a, as an academic always remain this uh, important and, uh, um, and dangerous gap between our discourse in the university and what was actually happening, uh, happening outside. 
Um, Lou mentioned uh, the, the, the problem of over tourism, for example, which is uh, uh, here before we had the, this, uh, this, the idea of the, of the tourist. Uh, when we talk about ambassador of peace, well, we have here tourists in, uh, in, in Greece, uh, just taking picture and selfie with the, with the, with the migrants in a, in a camp of refugees, which is not the kind of tourism and the kind of tourists that we want to see. Uh, we talk about another kind of tourism. Once again, uh, a kind of tourism that we don't want to see and we work in order to uh, avoid this kind of experience, the commercialization of the uh, misery of people. In India, and uh, Jai can, uh, uh, can confirm this, but in India, there is a product that uh, right now is, uh, uh, is, uh, has more, uh, is more public than the Taj Mahal, and is the slum, the, the different slums in India. So is more, uh, the tourists go more for the slums than to the Taj Mahal which is incredible because we talk about tourism and peace, we talk about intercultural dialogue, we talk about um, uh, um, tourists as ambassadors and peace, but of peace, but then in the end on the field, this keep happening and, and more and more and more. And also on the side of the, not only on the side of the demand, but also on the side of the supply is uh, more or less the same thing. We talk about uh, sustainable tourism, we talk about ecotourism, but many times what happened in the reality is that uh, local population, and I was very happy to see the, the, the slides of uh, uh, the president of the, of the Caribbean chapter, uh, because what happened actually is that then the local population continued to be explored by those that has these uh, big companies of uh, uh, tour operators or a, a resort, uh, et cetera. What happened? Happened that at certain point, uh, at certain point, I found uh, this uh, this great message, this great message that came from uh, Louis D'Amore, and I think I'm the only one that Lou that can pronounce your name good because I'm Italian. <laughs> yeah. so I, I can make justice to your Italian origin. Okay, so. <laughs> And then in 2017, Talebrify was also in this uh, event in London and was actually, uh, he received a, 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 an award from the, from the IPT. Uh, and I met him. I was, uh, I was honored to, it was a, a great moment for me because I was already following you uh, and, uh, and start this, um, start this uh, kind of uh, relation, sharing Thank ideas. You. Thank you so much. And, uh, and everything. And um, in 2018, I arrived this appointment as uh, I had the honor of this appointment as ambassador at large of the International Institute for Peace and Tourism. And from there, I start, I have to say, an amazing adventure. First of all, because I thought the first things I thought is what an ambassador has to do. <laughs> because uh, I really, I really felt the uh, this strong, strong, strong responsibility because uh, 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 because I recognize myself in the in the message now uh, at certain point be the, the the representative of this message around the world was a huge uh, responsibility and I really want to do this in the best possible way. Um, I can tell you that. Uh, that I had, I, I start to, to, to follow even uh, courses on uh, diplomas. Today, I belong to the global uh, uh, network of uh, <laughs> diplomatics, not because I feel like it, uh, uh, diplomatic in, in, the, in the strict sense, but because I like to, uh, to, to learn more and more about the, the way of communication, about the uh, uh, the way people approach also to, to, to different countries, to different audience, only because I want to do this, uh, I want to, 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 to do this job in the best uh, possible way. Here there are just some, uh, some pictures from, uh, 
from uh, some of uh, some some places. I was in Sarajevo here. Uh, I was with uh, with the colleagues in Bosnia. There I was in uh, in Ecuador, in uh, in Iran, uh, border with uh, Afghanistan uh, up there. <clears throat> All, uh, going all this place, sharing, uh, sharing and promoting the, the message of, uh, of peace to tourism. Um, also online, more recent, more recently, here I was with Gael. Uh, you can see there, and uh, was uh, was uh, um, was invited as ambassador of the in IPT, uh, and there was in the the. the uh, mm, this was an event with the, with the university there in Sydney because they uh, they were uh, they, had, they had an award for the for a student that make a work on uh, on the IPT and in few hours I'm going to have in Italy this uh, uh, this event that is about uh, the um, what they call uh, the route tourism. Why am I going to? Uh, why am I going to, uh, to 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 talk there and introduce the, the this uh, this event on uh, on uh, the tourism of the origins, the identity, because reflect what is the uh, what is the the main idea, the original idea of uh, of uh, um, peace through tourism. That is peace not only in the sense of conflict. But it's peace with the environment, peace with the present, peace with the past. So, in this sense, the fact of using tourism to reconcile with your own past and go and uh, uh, find out more about your origins, uh, your origins, this is part of creating peace uh, through tourism. Um, a second appointment. Uh, from the IPT was uh, that of uh, special envoy to uh, Iran. And uh, when I talk about this to, to Lou, I, I saw really his eyes <laughs> like uh, sparkling because he told me, I really want to do this. It's so long that I'm, I'm thinking about this. And I was so happy. To, to, to meet immediately the, this kind of expectation. And once again, I, I did my uh, best and I'm doing uh, my best. This was 2018 already immediately. Uh, well, I took almost one year and uh, I, I, I could establish there the, the, the Iran chapter. Uh, and we are still working uh, with the, for example, here you have the um, Terran Peace Museum. And uh, one person just just connect with us, Narges. That is exactly one in two of these pictures. Uh, I we are we are uh, um, partners of the uh, Tehran Museum of uh, Tehran Museum of the Holy Defense. That is one of the biggest museums in uh, in Asia, and an amazing museum uh, talking about the uh, war Iran Iraq. Uh, here we have some activities. The National Geographic uh, Farsi, uh, Persia uh, is uh, supporting us. Uh, here we have, we, we were invited to, uh, to join this day that they have in uh, Iran about the um, interaction with the world. They have a specific day of the interaction with the world. And this is in the, in the poster is the museum. Uh, and then we organize uh, inside this museum the International Seminar of Women for Peace uh, through Tourism in Iran, which was amazing because it was a fantastic uh, experience uh, um, involving uh, this strong uh, figure in Iran that are the, the, the women, very, very strong women. Um, and then keep uh, sharing in the Middle East, in particular in Iran, this uh, uh, the, the, the message. Uh, here I was with uh, Riza, uh, as you can see, as I said before, we had uh, we are traveling mm, together through Iran uh, a couple of times. We, we met each other. It's, uh, it's amazing to work together. And even now, during the pandemic um, in Iran in particular, it's being uh, uh, extremely difficult situation. Uh, they 
have the, they are under sanctions. So <clears throat> the, the situation that is already quite difficult become even more difficult because they don't have access to medicine or um, in uh, uh, equipment uh, the way we the way we do. So extremely um, bad situation that once again um, we are there supporting them. And what I what I think and what I learned in this time and as a special envoy there in Iran and now with the, with this is that what what the the institute bring is in particular in this context is really a strong uh, big massive amount of hope to people to hope where there is no hope anymore and i feel this uh, this uh, make uh, the 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 role even more important uh, humbly embrace this this challenge but more important and give more responsibilities because uh, because people really really uh, believe and embrace the message I would like to 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 share with you something that happened in Tehran um, I was there in a small apartment where there was no internet so in order to to work, I used to <clears throat> to go in a in a small bar that was near the, the apartment where I was, and uh, and basically spend the, the, there the, the the days because uh, because uh, I need their the internet to 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 work, and um, one of these days, uh, one of the person of the of the bar come to me and say, we are sorry, but we have to, to tell you that tomorrow we are we not going to be open. We cannot stay with the door open because it's this, the Ramadan will start and uh, we are going to, to have troubles with the, with the police if uh, we keep the, the door open. So you cannot work. But, and then he said, but by the way, what is your work? And I start to explain what I was doing. And uh, in the end of my explanation, this person goes to, went to the colleagues, talk with them and then come back to the table to me and say, look, what you are doing is extremely important for us. Tomorrow, even if the police can create us some troubles, we will be here anyway to let you keep working. So we will be here if the door is closed, just knock the door, enter and continue your work and thank you very much for what you are doing and what your organization is doing. So this was an amazing <laughs> amount of responsibility, but also an amazing amount of joy for me and for all the group of the Iran chapter, because we were doing actually the, the, the right things. And uh, tomorrow we will be with the, tomorrow, no, in a few hours, <laughs> we will be in Italy with, uh, with this association uh, that, uh, as I was saying before, uh, once again, the, the message of uh, peace through tourism, this time related, as I was saying, to the tourism uh, of the origins. Uh, so this was my, this was my uh, testimony and uh, my, my experience, many and many uh, more uh, uh, stories there are, but uh, I would like to leave the time for the, the discussion and uh, the second part of, the, of, this, uh, of this gathering together. But obviously, thank you very much, Lou, for everything, for the trust, and uh, it's been an amazing journey together. Thank you very much. Bravo, Mario. Uh, if you can, there is someone Thomas knows him, he's a reporter for E-Turbo News, Mario Masculo. He's in Rome. He would love to take part in your session. Oh, yo, of course. Okay, 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 okay. Thomas, uh, uh, Thomas do you have his email? Yes, I do. I will share it with you. I have your email and um, I think he'd be glad to attend. Yeah. And uh, an interesting session, Fabio, remembers me. But when did we go to Iran? Um, uh, Louis. 2008. 2008. And I think we we're the first Americans allowed to speak at the Hall of the People. And uh, you had a presentation, uh, Islamic Hall of the People, and you had a presentation on peace to tourism at that time.
So I, I did, yes. And I pointed out that the uh, the uh, president of Iran in 2000 had pro uh, proposed the UN International Year for a Dialogue Among Civilizations. It was accepted. And then uh, a couple of months later, George Bush in his uh, State of the Union address talks about the axis of evil. And uh, there was obviously no dialogue between the US and Iran. <laughs> the, the axis of evil being Iran and two other countries. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Lou, if you agree, I think- Fabio, uh, Fabio. Fabio and Thomas, if, if, I Fabio. Might, if I might make a suggestion, uh, yeah. we've now been uh, going for two hours and 15 minutes. Uh, if we could give Taleb a chance to speak, and then rather than doing part two this evening, uh, maybe we could schedule another session if that's agreeable with Thomas. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, uh, Lou. You can just schedule another session. We have our launch events going on all month, so December 30th, and uh, I think it would fit in very well. Okay, excellent. So we'll be in touch in terms of uh, scheduling it, uh, you and Fabio. Perfect, perfect for me. Uh, um, if uh, Fabio, uh, Fabio, can you hear me? Yes. Just one thing I'd uh, like to say, uh, you know, just a comment on uh, the slum tourism. I was in Soweto a few years. You know, slum tourism, it depends on the attitude with which it is conducted. Because while I was in Soweto, I spent like four or five hours over there. And what did I do? I had a few guys, we ate some food which was cooked locally. Because at the end of the day, you have to realize at the end of the day, the things that actually are far, far superior, far more numerous than the divisions. So I have seen people go into Islam and come out because it's, it's a bustling activity oriented place. Those people are living there. They've made their homes there. They've got their businesses there. How it's conducted. So if it's done with the sensibility, which takes local sensibility. I think we lost them again. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but I think that the, the message was uh, was quite clear. Uh, me personally, I don't. I still do not do, do not see this kind of uh, of practices uh, as sustainable. They do the same things in uh, they do the same thing in Brazil, and, um, but. I hope that Ajay can uh, enter again so we can have this this debate because without him. But I understood the point, uh, what what uh, Ajay was pointing out. Uh, personally, I, I still think that also if, if we see the, the profile of the person that that uh, are the normal consumers of this kind of tourism, I don't believe this really bring a positive uh, a positive contribution and the long term positive contribution to the to the place. Anyway, but unfortunately, Aja is not here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, yes, you, I, I, I Taleb speaks. Uh, may, may, I, may I say to Taleb uh, that uh, at the start of the session when I spoke. I wanted to thank you for all that you do for IIPT as chairman of our International Advisory Board and all that you did while you were Secretary General. It's very, very much appreciated. And also appreciated is what you did for the entire tourism industry. The, the way you allied with the World Travel and Tourism Council and Pata, David Scalzil, and... Uh, Mario. Mario. And Mario, uh, you, the three of you turned the industry around and, and did a fantastic job in steering the industry in the proper direction. Of, and we all thank you for that. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you, Lou. You're a person I respect very much. I look up to, I truly do. 
I still remember the days when we first met in Amman, Jordan, yes. the year 2000. I was not even involved in tourism at the time. I was not minister of tourism. I was in, the, in a different portfolio. Louis came and they had this very big meeting. We had just finished a few years before that peace treaty between Jordan and Israel. And I believe, Lou, you were trying to celebrate that and raise awareness about the connection to tourism and peace. I did not understand anything at the time. I came just as a friend and a colleague of the then Minister of Tourism, Akhil Murtaji. You remember that well? Yes. I still remember you then. Yeah. We were both very young at that time. But, <laughs> uh, but time has made us better, I hope. Now, what I want to say is the following. You, you and your organization have done a great job, really. I, I mean it. I'm not comp complimenting you here at all. I believe that peace through tourism can be achieved simply by facilitating people travel. No obstacles should be put in the face of travel. Let things go naturally. We need to encourage more people to visit, more people. But we also have to do that and create the right circumstances for people to be where they are. That's what sustainability is all about. When we talk about sustainability, many people just think it to the environment. That's not right. Environment is very important. Sustainability is about people. It's about creating connections between people. It's about sustaining life on Earth. That's what it is. And life cannot be sustained on Earth if there is war and there is animals. If we simply have people meet with each other, that's all what it takes. What it takes is somebody sitting there, having dinner with some local family, listen to their music, listen to their songs, listen to their dreams, meet them. Then they'll go home with them. No stereotypes about the place that you visited at all. I have traveled the whole world. I'm a better person, definitely. When you travel, you become a better person. I always keep saying this. Now, what is the right circumstance? Dances. But before that, we have to say that travel must be free. Travel is a human right today. It's not anymore just an elitist activity of a British or a German or a Swiss traveler going to India or China, coming back and writing a book about, about them. It's people moving around. The more people move around, the better this world becomes. No wonder we have problem from your part of the world, Lou. When 65% of the People in the United States don't eat, have passports. They've never traveled. And those that have passports, two thirds of them go only to the Caribbeans. They sit on the beaches and the shores. They don't interact with people and they go back home. That's the problem. The problem is people should need to travel more and they need to travel the right way. Now the right way is up to us, but even people to travel is up to us. When you have travel bans on certain groups of people, that's unacceptable at all. We should all take a very strong position against that. I'm glad that era is about to end in the United States because there is nothing called you deny me of coming anywhere or going anywhere. You know, you were talking about Iran. I visited Iran many times in my life. It's a wonderful place, wonderful people. They need to know the, the world and the world needs to know them. I even went to North Korea and I've seen the real wonderful people of North. North Korea. You can't isolate people. Now, I'm not a judge of, of regimes and systems. I will ne never be. But what I like to do is take any opportunity that any, any regime allows and make us go open doors and go visit. The, that's the best way to change the people. When the people of North Korea see us, they see that we're real people. We care for them. They care for us. The things change. Things that will change faster and better better. That's how we should approach things. Now, what is the right circumstances that we're responsible of creating in each country? We should lower the walls between visitors and the local community. There's not a visit in the developing world. It's like God coming on Earth. It's a blonde person with blue eyes coming from Mars visiting us. He should be respected and isolated. That's not right. Tourists and visitors are human beings, just like the people in the country are human beings. Therefore, we should lower the walls between them. I always like to say the story that happened with me when I went 
to visit the country in East Asia. I'd like to repeat it here to you if my time allows for that. I was visiting Manila and the lady minister there of the Philippines wanted to take me to see a beautiful project that she thought was going well in an island. This island was turned into a tourism destination by an investor that has put so much money in there. That investor had so much money, so much capital, that he was able to make a link, an air link between Manila and that island. A helicopter connection. We went by helicopter, we went there. When we arrived there, the investor was waiting for us at the, at the air helipad. He welcomed us, of course. He, I understood from them that he had to buy the entire island to make this project. The project was an interesting one. Not my type, but an interesting one. It was Hollywood. It was uh, Disney land for adults. For example, there were hotels built Mexican style, French style, Chinese style, so on, and restaurants and so forth. It's a whole world in one, one place. What they didn't tell me at the time was that there were 90,000 people still living on that island. So I got curious. I asked them what happened with these people. The investor, the owner of the island said, don't worry, they're like my children. Don't worry, I take good care of them. All of the people that work in this hotel are from that community. I built schools, I built clinics in that community. I'm taking care of that community. So I asked to go visit that community. He was a bit hesitant. The minister told him he must go if he wants to go. So I went there, I spent two hours, I came back. The minister was having dinner with that gentleman. He said, what did you see? I said, you're right, people there respect you very much and appreciate the fact that you created jobs. But he said, oh, there's a but. I said, there's a big but. He said, what? I said, but I'm not sure creating jobs alone is, is enough. He said, what do you mean? I said. I'm not sure that the children and the children of the community now living there would be happy to spend the rest of their lives working in your hotel, serving the rich people of the world, to come back every day to their homes to see the difference in economic life standards. He say, oh, that's serious. So what do you suggest? I said, you must encourage your people to go visit that community, to create jobs there, not to bring them to you. He said, but I'm bringing them here. They're, they're doing well. For example, tonight there is a art singing and dancing from that community here at the hotel. I say, it's better to go see it where they live, not to have bring them to you here. It's important to lower the, the walls between the tourists and the local community. That's very important. Today, corporate social responsibility is not about sharing money and sharing your capital, your profits, about sharing your business. You have to interact with the local community. You have to make sure the local community benefits from you and sees you as a human being when you go visit there. That's why I too have a reservation like Edge. I on the issue of slum tourism, whether it's in India or Brazil, because people there go there just to have pictures with other people. That's not the way to do it. You have to go there with the right attitude. You're right, Ajay. The issue of attitude is absolutely correct. That's what I wanted to say, and thank so much, everybody. I apologize again for being a bit late. I tried to stay up until 4.30 in the morning, but I couldn't, so I slept, and I woke up a bit late. Thank you so much, Lou, for all the good work you're doing. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you, Ajay. Everybody there, thank you. You're working for putting all of this together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Taleb, for all you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Lou, uh, so if we skip the, 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 the second part, and anyway, I think that the people more or less talk also about their future plans. So, uh, but if you were going to skip, I would leave you. Uh, probably you want to, uh, Thomas, Jürgen Thomas, to say something also. And, sure. and then you can uh, you can uh, make some final remarks. I suggest to go this way. Okay, so Louis is going to make the final remarks. I would assume. 
or you want me to make the final remark? No, I, I, I think that I think that Lou wants also to you to say a couple of things, even okay. if you introduce very well. We give him the last word. Okay. You should say you should say a few yeah. words, Jurgen. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And, and then and then Lou can make the final remarks, of course. That's right. That's right, Fabio. Correct. No. Yeah. Thank. Thank you very much, um, um, uh, Lou. And um, I know there is a long history uh, with Louis D'Amour and the International Institute for, the Truth, for Peace to Tourism. And um, I think I first heard you on a radio show uh, here in Hawaii. It was an AM show and I was driving. And because of you, I was almost driving another round around the island because it was so interesting. And I didn't have AM radio at home. And um, I made uh, contact and, um, and um, ever since uh, we're friends and we're working together and it's uh, really an amazing journey. And uh, Peace to Tourism is so much part of our international travel and tourism industry. It, um, especially in these times where we go through the worst crisis, um, unfortunately. And uh, this crisis also uh, brings people together. And um, this is peace. And uh, so maybe finally, the idea of Peace to Tourism be becomes more and more reality in the world and and I'm, I'm so glad that you know when you were doing this first when I met you you were doing it pretty much all alone and now you have a team from all around the world that works with you that is dedicated and I'm very thankful for this. Um, I also uh, wanted to uh, remind everyone on this platform um, World Tourism Network we're very excited to start World Tourism Network our official opening event is tomorrow where we'll introduce our various chapters, our, our, um, our concept, where we'll hear from our founders, and uh, we'll also introduce various interest groups. I hope you will join us. Um, we have an entire month of events. Uh, we had many already, and even now it's uh, now seven in the evening here. We had events all day. We have two more coming up tonight. I would like to anyone who wanted to be part of it um, to register on WTN.travel. Just click on the event page. So go to Expo. The next one coming up in just uh, about 50 minutes is about Mafia Island as a model uh, for sustainability in the tourism industry. And Mafia Island is in Tanzania. And the presentation will be by our one of our founding members, Peter Byrne. Um, he runs Mafia Island in Tanzania. It'll be very interesting. And after this, we're going to stay in Af Africa. We're going to Zimbabwe. And we have a presentation by Arvin uh, Nider. He is an Indian guy, but um, he lives in, in Zimbabwe um, for many years and has a tour operator there. And he's talking about Zimbabwe Africa paradise presentation. And then uh, tomorrow, our time, um, we have our launch event at uh, 6 p.m. London time. And the next day is our highlight, really. We have a keynote panel. And um, uh, this will be uh, with Her Excellency Sheikha Mai Bint Mohammed Al Khalifa. And I might pronounce this wrong. But uh, she is the, the candidate it's good. Uh, for <laughs> UNWTO. Um, and we're really hoping, um, I don't want to sound biased, but I am biased. And I want her to win this uh, this race, and she will be on our panel. And uh, I know we have um, Dr. Tyler Britfai, um on the panel. We have uh, Walter Manzebi, Alain St. Ange. We have DJ, who has his own um, event, aviation event, and runs our aviation uh, interest group. So it's going to be quite interesting. Also, we have Professor Lipman and Katfred Nikubi, who's the uh, chairman of the African Tourism Board. And next week. Just look at our calendar. We have events from all over the world, including from our good friend Mona Napa about the healthiest spot on earth, what is uh, Dead Sea and Jordan, and, and much more. Uh, just um, be part of it. And uh, But anyway, so we're talking about peace for tourism. And Louis, I, I wanted to thank you for 35 years of um, great service. And you really shaped this industry tremendously. And uh, let's hope, what, let's see what we do for the next 35 years, at least our children and grandchildren will see this. And um, uh, I guess uh, your, your organization is now really in a stage of expansion and um, 
and there's a bright future in this. Thank you again, and thank you everyone for being part of uh, this panel. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas, and thank everyone who participated in the panel, and also those who joined in. I recognized uh, quite a few of you. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a chance for anyone to ask questions, but I, I saw your pictures uh, uh, being present, and thank you for uh, joining us. Um, Taleb, you, you mentioned your experience in the Philippines. In 1961, I was stationed at Subic Bay in the Marine Corps. Mm. And part of my uh, responsibilities was as a liaison officer to the Philippine Marine, Marine Corps. Uh, I liaised with someone by the name of Captain Rudy Brown, who eventually became Commandant of the Marine Corps. Yes. And uh, Subic Bay itself is now a tourism resort. Very interesting, as, as I think also is the, the uh, Clark Airfield, which was uh, the US Air Force Base. Uh, and, and let me just mention that it was actually my experience in the Marine, Marine Corps that uh, inspired me to do something more positive than fight other people do yes. something more positive, uh, creating harmony among people. That, that was what turned out to be my uh, main inspiration and navigational star. Takes an experience like that. Star. Takes an so, experience uh, like that. Thomas, uh, congratulations on all these uh, excellent Zoom sessions you're organizing. And uh, Taleb, thank you also for the letter, that open letter that you and, and uh, Francesco Frangiali wrote today. Very much appreciate it. Thank you all for participating. And Thomas, uh, I look forward to uh, taking part in, in your uh, next session, uh, your, um, your keynote session with Taleb and the minister from uh, the Middle East. Perfect. Thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Louis. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.